right, guys. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Hidden Gems podcast with me, where we focus on bridging the gap between people who have found success in some area in life and people who feel stuck, stalled, and need to pivot. Today is a very special day because we have our first male guest on the podcast. Can you guys guess who it is? It's a very special guest, aka my old co host of Clickbait. Hi. <laughs> I'm a male. You've Joe. run out of guests at the beginning of this pie already, huh? No, Joe. You are our first guy. And I felt like it would be an honor for you, Joe Amabile, to be our first guest. Did I say your last name right? You did. Almost, almost. Amabile. I'm honored. I'm honored that you asked. See? Yes. See? Yeah. And um, sometimes we get in a crunch about guests. So thanks for living in New York. Thanks yeah. for being here. <laughs> um, all right. So this podcast is going to be called how to make lemonade out of lemons or in joe's case how to make pasta sauce out of tomatoes tomatoes yes how to make tomato sauce out of tomatoes tomato sauce or pasta sauce pasta sauce because what would you use tomato sauce for if it's not on pasta what else uh well mm, if it's not on pasta like Mm. eggplant parm Oh. Chicken parm. Okay, 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 okay. There's other there's other things. Have you ever made a tomato soup out of your pasta? No. Sauce. Out of your pasta sauce. No. No. Mm. Do you think that would be good? I don't. <laughs> I, I, I I do not. No. Okay. Okay. All right. So Joe But I do I do like tomato soup. I like tomato soup too, but it just not through the pasta sauce. No. Okay. Well, Right. Somebody else had suggested to like use my pasta sauce for Bloody Marys, and I also thought that was gross. Did you try it though? No. <laughs> but they do use tomato sauce. They don't know. They use tomato juice. Okay. Because there's a big That's difference. That's a big difference. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a Bloody Mary girly. I will say that. Um, so I don't like them. But really? Yeah. I don't like them. Do yeah. you ever have one with tequila? I've never, I've, I've had one sip once and I want my tomato sauce to be hot. I don't want it to be cold. I don't want it to be alcoholic. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. That's fair. The only time I, I ever drink tomato juice on its own is if I'm on a plane and I'm getting nauseous. Oh, is it a remedy? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I never At heard that. At least for me. But like, is that like a thing? I think it is. Really? Yeah. Okay. Look at yeah. Joe dropping gems already in our first three, two minutes. There we go. <laughs> tomato sauce if you're feeling nauseous on an airplane. Okay. I'm going to try that next time because sometimes I do actually Yeah. Um, get like that. So your birthday is this month, the mm-hmm. day before mine. Yes. What did you do? We we went to Illis. We as in your beautiful S- wife? Yes, Serena and I, my <laughs> beautiful wife. We went to a restaurant called Illis in um, Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Oh, and? It and? was excellent. It was excellent. So the chef, I don't know if he was co-founder of Noma or was just there at the beginning. You have to fact check that. I don't know. Right. Um, but he was part of Noma somehow mm-hmm. um, at the beginning. Noma's the restaurant in Copenhagen, which was like best in the world for like ever. Okay. Cause I was going to ask that cause I didn't know. Um, and then, yeah, we, this, uh, you know, this restaurant opened up, I think, I think at some point last year, Bon Appetit did like a cool video on it. Um, and Serena surprised me for my birthday. Aww. And it's one of those that's like a, I want to say it was like a 10 course. Wow. Yeah. Did you feel, was it like a teeny? You feel full. Okay. You feel full. There was, there were two fish dishes that were the full fish. Really? Yeah. So you had one that was raw and then you had one that was um, cooked over fire and then they, they cook it over um, fire and they put like a, almost like a leaf on top of it. It was excellent. I love fish. I'm a pescatarian. Okay. Yeah. So do we, in 10 courses, do each of you get 10 courses or do you share those 10 courses? No, we each get our own. Oh, well, on no, on the fish you share. Okay. And then like, so like the snacks at the beginning, which um, were like, you know, it was like a clam and then some other shit and then something else and i forget because i just can't remember but um you get your own and then when it comes to the bigger dishes like the fish you split and then at the end the last dish was antelope which came on um um 
a stone that was burning or that was cooking the antelope. Mm -hmm. uh, and that we each got our own. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, this is fine dining, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That sounds great. Um, I don't eat a lot of things, so I don't really have those experiences a lot. But that's good. That's great. And then what else did you do? I mean, we didn't we didn't go out after because the didn't you go to a show? Oh yeah, but the <laughs> meal was like three. The meal was like almost three hours long. Okay, um, good to know. And Serena had a little bit of an allergic reaction. She did. Yeah, because we didn't realize that. So she has a severe nut allergy. Yes, we know that. And sumac, which is a spice, as um, is is in the same. Family is, I want to say, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's hazel. I think it's hazelnut. Mm. Mm. And she got, she felt a little bit on her, on her lips. So that kind of like. What number was that in the course? That was one. No. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we had to kind of slow down and then, and then she was, uh, and then she was fine. Okay. Um, thank oh God. God. Thank, cause it wasn't like she, and she didn't really, but she keeps just, her EpiPen. it just touched her lips because basically the sumac like rim the, uh, clam or okay. whatever it was. So yeah. Right. Cause when you eat the clam, it's on your lips. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But like if she had to use her EpiPen, then we would have had to leave. Oh my We would have had to go to the hospital. Um, and then the next day we went and saw enemy of the people. Which was excellent. Wow. Jeremy mm. Strong, right? Yeah, he's really good. Oh, he's the best. He's yeah. so good. Ugh, I miss Succession so much. Um, okay, that's great. Uh, I love that. I um, really had a chill weekend. I was going to go to Atlantic City, and it mm. got canceled. Oh, you didn't go? We didn't go. No, oh, we didn't go. That sounded um, fun. Yeah, I know. Um, it was a water park situation, whatever my friends wanted to do, and last minute it got canceled. And so I did a spa day, chilled very much. Like, I was so relaxed. My mom called me, and she was like, are you okay? I was like, I'm so relaxed right now. <laughs> so, wow. so it was, it was, it was good. I, I needed that a lot. Um, so you're an Aries. Yes. Serena's a Scorpio. Okay. Do you believe in astrology? Uh, not really. I, isn't it like, isn't it proven that like it's not even correct because like, whatever sign you are has uh, technically is actually moved. I don't know what you're talking about. No, is that not a thing? I don't know what you're talking about. You're an Aries. Okay. You're like right, right in the middle. All right. I'm just you're saying. You're like right in the middle. I've, I've heard. For people who are on the cusp, I've heard that things like depending like, you know, they could be different, but like you're in the middle. Sure. So you're an Aries. You're not. Yeah, but not all Aries are alike. That, okay. But there are. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just, I mean, it's just like, there's just no way, you know, it's just like, I just don't understand. Like if all Aries acted the same way, then. Then sure, I believe it, but that's not the case. Well, it's not about acting the same. Like we have like different upbringings and things like that, but there's certain characteristics and certain traits that they say that carry along with other people. You don't believe that? Sure. Well, with the sure, fire, but, but with there's, the earth, with the sure, but but there's also like I, like what's another sign? Scorpio. Yes, you're. Yes. Okay, so I'm sure there's things that I do that a Scorpio also does. I'm just saying, y'all. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Well, I mean, yes. Like, do Scorpios eat toast in the morning for breakfast? Probably. That's I mean, what I'm saying. But, that, <laughs> but that's <laughs> not what the astrology is. Okay. okay. So I knew that you were going to be difficult about this. So I have this book. It's called The Astrology of Love and Sex. So this book is very interesting. And I love when couples, actually a friend of mine, um, who you know, Bruna. Bruna is the reason why I got this book. Because she was like, oh my gosh, it's so good. Da, da, da. Okay. Um, Bruna is also with a Scorpio, but she is not an Aries. She is a Gemini. She's a Gemini. She's Leo. She's a Gemini. She's a Gemini. Sorry. She's okay. a Gemini. Sorry, Bruna. Um, and so I want you to read this little excerpt about Aries and Scorpio. And let's see if it's true. Okay. For you sure. and your boo. Okay? okay. The rambunctious ram and the strategic scorpion have a lot in common. Both are ruled by Mars. Both love to fuck. And both like to pick fights. They need to be careful and choose their battles wisely. There's plenty of drama in store for these two. But hey, they kind of like it that way. These two signs are both committed to self-development 
and together they will enjoy exploring spirituality, sexuality, and the meaning and purpose of life. For the long haul, Aries needs to watch out about being bossy and Scorpio needs to learn how to let go of a grudge and forgive and forget. So, so far, none of this, like, like that is not cl- even close. For, so I am not bossy and Serena doesn't hold on to a grudge. So you're not bossy. I'm not bossy. Mm, uh, and Serena, Serena, Serena truly doesn't. She actually knows how to forgive and forget like pretty quickly. Um, I would say that's one of her great qualities. Seriously. Aries temper tantrums won't take them far, but neither will any of Scorpio's manipulations. So I don't throw temper tantrums and <laughs> Serena doesn't manipulate. So Joe, this book's Joe. off. Okay, hold on. Aries is too impulsive to be a good target for any tricks Scorpio might have up their sleeve. That's true. No one's going to trick me. If these two can't be tender with each other, it's not a pairing that's worth the time for either of them. Okay, but they, when they are loving and supportive, Aries is able to teach Scorpio a lot about how to achieve their goals and how to manage their time and energy. She does do that. And Scorpio will encourage Aries to face their fears. Hmm. Don't know if she does that. <laughs> Fierce, Aries, Fierce Aries is very brave, but Scorpio can see the inner child within them who might still need a hug. Truthfully, I never need a hug. <laughs> the energy between the sheets is powerful. When Scorpio's intensity in the bedroom <laughs> meets Aries' passion, there are sure to be fireworks. Fireworks. If they decide to move in together, they will likely have more sex toys and props than anything else in their apartment. A sauna in a steam room would be a plus two. A sauna in a steam room would be a plus. Um, unfortunately, our apartment's like 650 square feet, so we can't fit either of those in there. Um, okay. So, okay. Do you want me to save the page or? Uh, I have a bookmark for you, okay. yes. Okay, wait. So you mean to tell me you're not bossy? No. No, I'm not bossy at all. Okay. So you don't want things your way? Um, I want my life to go my way. I mean, I, just because it, I think everyone in the world wants things to go their way, right? Some people just go with the flow. Some people yeah, but, are very much even, flowing. I flow, but what I'm saying is <laughs> even if I want things, like everybody on this earth wants things to go their way. That doesn't necessarily make them bossy. But do you, so, and you don't throw temper tantrums if things don't go your way? Nope. I don't. I, I cannot wait till Serena listens to this because I, you know what? I, I think she might think differently. I actually, I actually threw a temper tantrum today. <laughs> See? I, actually, before I got here. If, I don't know if you know, if you actually looked at my face when I walked in, but I was in a very bad mood. See? Yeah. See? Yeah. I had to run five and a half miles just to get rid of the anger that was building up inside of me. Why were you mad? Okay, we can't talk about it. All right, fine. Um, okay. But nothing to do with my relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But regardless, here's the thing. Bossy, Aries, mm. I, I, as your friend, think you're a little bossy. Interesting. I do think you're a little bossy. Well, as my friend, as your friend, I'd like to say I disagree. I don't, <laughs> I, I, I don't think I am. Honestly, I, the, uh, you know what, but. Situations would be better if I took charge. Okay. See? See? <laughs> so, so there it is. There. Okay. Sure. Okay. Wait. So you don't think anything in here was true? Some of it was true. Well, some of it. <laughs> yeah, some of it. I mean, out of that, out of that entire page, I would say twenty-five to thirty percent was probably true. Twenty-five to thirty percent. Okay. Well, guys, yeah. Joe is debunking this. I think I find. I will say this though. Okay. I I will also say, I will also be like, that's bullshit. But in reality, I say that about everything. <laughs> and I used to, I used to, I, well, I used to always bust your balls about meditating. Oh. But I do meditate now. And oh. I actually think it's very important. Okay. I actually, I, I really try to meditate for at least 20 minutes every day. 
Okay. And, and I didn't meditate today. And that's probably another reason why I'm fucking pissed off. But that's a, it's a whole nother thing. Exactly. So yeah. why did you start meditating? Um, to calm, to, to calm my nerves and anxiety. And it's actually really helped. Okay. But good. it's, it will, it started, it started more with, um, breathing techniques because I just wanted to actually, I figured I was just, I wasn't breathing correctly and that was an issue. Mm -hmm. And then, so what I'll do is I'll do like an 11, that Wim Hof, like I'll do the 11 minute breathing Lovely. exercise. And then, and then at, once I finish that, I will probably, I'll meditate for like 10 to 15 minutes. So it's like a total of like 20 to 25 and you try to do it every day. I try to do it every day. Today I have not, and yesterday I didn't. But the day is not over, so you can. I could. Actually, guys, we're about to do a medit. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> we're about to do a meditation right now. So joke and chill the fuck out. There we go. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so same, same, right? So on your mindfulness journey, this is a great transition actually, because on your mindfulness journey, you, I know you run a lot now. I don't run a lot. Well, you did the you did the marathon, right? <laughs> I did the marathon, but I haven't since the marathon. I've cut my running down to like fifty percent minute, fifty percent at least. I mean, from training, I'm doing, I'm doing more. Well, no, I'm, I'm actually, um, I do more of the assault bike is now my cardio. What is it? The assault bike, you know the bike. No, what what kind of bike is this? Assault well, it's like um, it's it's one that like. There's a lot of resistance. It's a good cardio. Oh, the yeah. one that yeah. kind of goes like this. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, at the gym. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, every time I call you, you're at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, But yeah, I, I just, I love running. I love it. But I, um, and I run way more in the summer because I like to run outside. So that's also part of the reason. Okay. Um, but I don't know how great running is on the body. With your daily routine. Mm-hmm. Things that you say, like, I know that you can, again, maybe this isn't an Aries trait, maybe it's just a Joe trait, but the highs and the lows, you know, you can fire up real quick, right? Fire sign. Sure. How do we stay calm? What do we do to stay calm? What does Joe do? Meditate. That's 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 the number one thing. Yeah, or work, go to the gym. Or go to the gym, or both. Yeah, both. Both, okay. So gym, run, or gym, or cardio. Mm -hmm. um, do you do classes? No, meditate. Uh, it takes me. I'm. I'm. I'm at, at the beginning. I do anything. I'm very uncoordinated, and it takes me. If a class is forty five minutes, it takes me twenty five minutes to feel somewhat comfortable, <laughs> and by that time, I've missed everything, and I'm just like, why did I do this? Okay, so you're a self motivator at the gym. That's good. Um. So yeah, those those would be the things, or like, if I'm really stressed, if I'm like in, if I'm in. Uh, if I'm in like bad shape, I will probably watch like Seinfeld. Like oh. old well, like I'll watch like old episodes of Seinfeld. Oh. Now is that a gym watching but like stuff that you've seen already, but like that you just love. Because yeah. you've seen all of them. Yeah, because that something like that will calm um calm my nerves. Or like watching like a baseball game. Right, 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 right. Okay. Huh. Watching TV to calm the nerves. Okay. I never thought about it like that. I normally just watch certain I watch things that I've seen already like your Seinfeld is my sex in the city. Yeah. So, you know, I'll watch that when I'm just like, mm, I don't, I guess it's not an anxiety thing, but okay. So speaking of TV, let's talk about reality TV. Mm -hmm. So like I said, you're, you're great at making lemonade out of lemons. So you went home night one, as mm -hmm. everyone knows on The Bachelorette, but then you married the love of your life on Paradise. Yeah. When you, like, do you ever, like, sit back and really reflect on that? No. <laughs> okay, well, let's do it <laughs> no. right now. Yeah, okay. Let's do it right now. How does that make you feel? Like, when you went on Bachelorette in, in the first place, yeah. where were you in your life to be like, okay, I'm going to just go on this show and see what happens? I was I was 30, and I was single in Chicago, and I kind of looked at it like, like, I'm probably not even going to get on this show. And if I do, like, like it, it's a new experience. I looked at it like it's a new experience, so why not give it a shot? Right. Okay. All right. So then we go home night one. Everyone's like, oh, my God. How could you send this guy home? You were awkward, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Paradise was just a normal trajectory. From, yeah. Right? Like, it was like, okay, that didn't work out, but maybe this will. Is mm -hmm. that your mindset on going to Paradise? Yeah. It was like it can't really. I mean, going home night one is, like, as bad as it gets. So I'm like, well. 
if I'm if I'm at rock bottom, technically I could only go up. Okay, okay, good. So then you go there, then you go on dancing, and like I couldn't even fathom. Uh, that was fine. It was just it was honestly it was pretty normal because I was I was used to working very long like produce grocery store hours long yep. days mm -hmm. six six days a week mm -hmm. um so then i'm like you know and then you go to like rehearsals and it's it's you know it's totally different but at the same time it's it's the same same kind of thing like longer hours and it keeps you on a schedule and you stay busy so i just i just felt busy it okay. just it just felt and and i am something that that truly actually like i benefit from being busy because when I'm not, that's kind of when I go crazy. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so yeah, it really just, it kind of just felt like this is crazy. I'm kind of, I've kind of just like kind of stepped into a whole new world slash potential like career, I guess. And um, just, yeah, just kind of go with it. Okay. So then fast forward to paradise. It's like, we're doing the podcast. Yeah. We're on clickbait doing the podcast. Why did you go on Paradise? Uh, I I was I feel almost like it was kind of the same thing of like, well, I'm still single. It it did technically work for me the first time. Um, and like at that point, like I didn't really have anything to lose. So so there's so you said it worked for you the first time. There's like this idea that sometimes we I think we've talked about this before too it's like this show the bachelor bachelorette paradise it's like it really works for certain people and then it and re whether they end up together later on or not but like the actual show of it and it really doesn't work for certain people <laughs> like me <laughs> like me why do you think that is or do you think it's just by chance I think it's oh, I think I think I don't think like I'm the type of per. I don't. I don't really think there's a person that it like works for. Really, I, I, I think it's. I think it's by chance. I also think you have to look at it like you can meet the love of your life. I, was, I don't think there's soulmates like that. I don't really believe in. Okay. Um, and I believe you can meet the soul, the 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 love of your life at a random bar in New York on a Tuesday night. One hundred percent. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So why can't you meet them on a beach in Mexico? It, it's it's essentially it's kind of the same thing. But we, if you do like the person that you meet, you have a ton of one on one time mm -hmm. with them. Uh, you know, away from all the outside distractions. So you re so in the whatever filming it is, twenty something days you really, really do get to know someone where if you meet someone in a bar in New York, you guys, even if you just, if you hook up, if you just get their number, you may not hear from them for, you know, a couple of days and you don't meet up for another seven days and then you play the game back and forth. Right. But in a situation like paradise, if you really are into a person and they're into you, you can't really play games. Right. Cause it's just in your face every day. Yeah. You brought something up that's, wild to me just said you don't believe in soulmates and that just like dinged in my head because no shade if you believe in it or don't believe in it but I think cultivating a relationship and you know my parents have been together for ever your parents have been together forever it's like my parents always say it's a choice you make a choice to show up for the person that you decide to be with and that's not necessarily saying that my mom and dad are soulmates or your parents are soulmates, but they have made a choice, a conscious choice to kind of pick each other and be with each other, you know, and choose each other every day. So that, and I am someone that I do believe in soulmates and I do believe in like soul connections with certain people, but I don't believe you have to necessarily marry your soulmate and or you know be with your soulmate i just think that there are certain people that you meet that make you grow exponentially okay like in in a soul way sure does that make sense yeah so but that mindset that you just said that you don't believe in it makes me think that like 
that is there's a certain openness that someone would have going on a beach and or a bar or wherever and saying I meet this person I like this person and this could be someone who I choose every day versus someone else who goes on a beach and is like mm, this person's not my soulmate that's not my soulmate that doesn't feel like my soulmate do you yeah, see what I'm saying and I think that's why I think that's why there's so many people that are single because they're looking for like the perfect person or like the the their idea of like my soulmate and i just don't think i just don't think that exists if if i die if i walk out of this podcast and die don't which i hope that. that doesn't happen i hope not either <laughs> morbid i'm confident that over time serena will be able to fall in love with someone else well okay but falling in love is one thing and really feeling like i don't know like a you know like so betty white yeah famously said because she was married, she married the love of her life, and then she never got married again. And she said, once you've had the best, you don't need the rest. But that was a choice, right? Yeah. That was a choice. Just like what you're saying, you know, yeah, Serena could make the choice to fall in love with someone else or date someone else or whatever, but that doesn't mean that she wouldn't still feel so, you know, yeah, soul I guess, uh, connected sure. to you. Okay. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that could be. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so th these are these are interesting things. I wonder um, for the listeners, what do you guys think about the soulmate versus the choosing a person? This is hitting me right now. Mm. Every time I do this podcast, something hits me. That just hit me. Okay, so you have really transitioned things and you, I think, did have an open mind when it came to going on these shows. It wasn't you know, they say like people go on the show for the wrong reasons, blah, 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 blah. But you just had an open mind about it in general, which is great. Someone thinking of going on a reality show. What's your advice for them? Just, I guess, just just make sure it's something you want to expose yourself to. Like really just just know that like um, there's a lot of like good that could come from it, a lot of backlash. And like you kind of have to be be – I I don't think it's be okay, but be ready for both. Right. And then and then I would just say like be be who you are and don't do anything that like you would regret. Yes. And that's it. Yes, I would agree with that because it's coming. It's becoming more and more popular for lots of people. Obviously, these reality shows are not going anywhere. It could happen to you. You could be casted on the next reality show. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. What's the most cringe? thing about reality tv <laughs> i think the most cringe thing is you when they're saying when someone's saying something that they it seems like it's rehearsed i guess yes like they know that they should say this because they've watched so the they show. say it yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. i would say the most cringe thing is when <laughs> when you know that someone doesn't have a connection with the bachelor or bachelorette and they're like just intentionally doing stuff for like either airtime or whatever and it's just like that to me and it, but it's because I was on the show and I know that that's something that happens and there's someone from our season who did that a lot I'm like and then when they watch it back and they're getting so much hate for the shit that they did, knowing that that really wasn't authentic to themselves. And they're like, meh, 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 me, me, me. I'm like, girl. Or I'm like, dude. Yeah. That is the most cringe thing for me. That's why you said to your point, show up as your authentic self. Don't do something that you are going to regret. Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah. But again, there probably wouldn't be much of a show if everyone, if like people didn't do certain things they regret like no but some people are authentically messy yeah but some people are i mean i'm sorry queen victoria she just she right yeah <laughs> she she's just she is who she is no regrets i've talked to her after the season after her season whatever and she was just like look this is it right yeah i liked her i liked her too yeah. i liked her too so there's certain people who are just entertaining anyway and in, in general right yeah. So that's true. Yeah. So and she was just like, I mean, people hate me, but like, whatever. I don't care. Like, it is what it is. And that that's what it is. She was never like, guys, oh, my God, no, leave me alone. Like, yeah. she she just owned it. And if you're going to be that person or be that villain, same thing with Demi. Own it. Yeah. Own it. 
So that that's not so to me. Everything that I saw her, it wasn't like cringe. It was entertaining. I was like, ooh, popcorn. Yeah. Right? Okay, so grocery store Joe, Sundays with Joe. Yeah. You said you used to work really long hours um, working at the grocery store. So people think that you were like at the grocery store bagging things, and you were <laughs> not. You were actually a- I have bagged. But you were you were a partner at a grocery store, right? Uh, yeah, small store, and then I was a buyer- um, for another store, and before that, I used to wholesale produce to big grocery store chains. Okay, in Chicago. How did you get into that? Family. Okay, so it was a family. Okay, yeah. great. I didn't want to get into it. <laughs> I I was I I mean, I would go to the produce market with my dad when I was like eleven, twelve. I hated it. Um, I hated it. it was horrible. Um, and I said I never want to. But then when I when I left the Chicago Mercantile Exchange Board of Trade. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I guess I'm going back into this business because it was like the only other thing I knew. Right, right, right. It's what you knew and you did it for an amount of time. So what did you learn from those jobs that helped you with producing Sundays with Joe, your pasta sauce? Well, nothing in the – well, I was in produce for much longer than I was in actual grocery stores. Grocery store, um, I was only in for like a year max. Mm -hmm. Um, Hmm. But just – just having just being in there that year, you you just see how um how like canned products and CPG products like move in a store and how much you would have to sell. But I'm I'm lucky because Sundays with Joe, um, I have a business partner who's a, also a very good friend of mine who's a distributor, so he handles all um the the grocery store like getting in and all the that side of it. So. Did he bring it to you to have a pasta sauce or did you bring it to him? Uh, we just kind of like we – I just said like thinking about getting a product and that made the most sense at the time. It was during COVID. There was like nothing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just kind of like worked on it together and then boom. I love these like COVID uh... – these COVID products. Like there's so many of them mm-hmm. and they really – I mean – you. It's funny when you have time to really think about what you want to do, what you can get done when you're like conquering down. Uh, So that's a gem, I think, in the sense of you had this connection and people talk about, you know, your network being your best work. Is that what it's like? Your network is your best work? Something like that. I've never heard of it though. Yeah, something like that. And it's, you know, honing in with the people that you know and when you want to start something or if you're looking to start something – start with the people that you know and what they do and then kind of build through that. And I think people are always, when they, they have a great idea and they want to look externally, but most of my friends actually in New York too who have their own businesses, they started with their network first. Yeah. So, okay. I agree with that. Yeah, that's great. Um, and then, so if anyone's trying, so is there like a, a cheat code at all to like get into a grocery store? Cause I know lots of people have like elixirs and juices and this and that and smoothies or whatever they want to try to put out there into the world. Is there like a cheat code to get into a grocery store or something like that? Or like the process? Uh, I should know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think it's more, I, I think, I think it's just like you have to knock on doors. I think it's like any other business. Like if you believe in, in your product and what you, what you're selling, then you just have to hustle yeah. and event and it takes time. And then eventually you'll get there. Do you think, I think it is, is like whole foods getting into like a whole foods. Is that like the Mecca? Like what's like the, what's like the HBO of. No, it's not whole foods. It's oh, what is it? No, Delson's? it's, yeah, it's it's more of like it's it's getting into like I th- I think it's like getting into like the big box stores like the Targets of the world. Oh, cuz yeah, that's the just the Costco's. Okay, cuz that's like that's just the the number is amplified. Yeah. Okay, so Costco or Target. If you really you that's when you know you made it when you're in Costco. Well, <laughs> you also have to you have also like even if you get in those places, which is hard to get into, but then you have to sell. Mm. And then cuz if you don't then you're the best way. The best way to go about, to do anything is, is just to sell directly online. But selling any kind of food product online is t- tough, like especially like a pasta sauce because a it's glass, mm. and most people are going to do their grocery shopping in a grocery store. Mm. They're not really looking to buy online. But like, yeah, like I think like people that like sell merch direct to consumer, like that's that's the best way. Yeah, because there's no there's no middleman then. Right. So. 
And do you get like a contract? Would people get like a contract with like a big store? Like you get like, is it like a year? Is it? I think it all, I think it all depends. Okay. Yeah. I think it all depends, but I would, I think there is some, there's some type of contract and then you, you, I'm sure you have to, you have to perform, you know, certain numbers, a certain number by a certain date. Wow. So this is so fascinating to me because I know nothing about this. And I mean, I'm sure there's people who are like, maybe I want to try that. Uh, when you where is Sundays are just majority of grocery stores in Chicago sell it. Okay, um, Mariano's is the chain that sells it. Mm -hmm. um, I love Mariano's. All like the Caputo's sell it. Um, Dom's Fresh Market sells it. There's there's a bunch, but most of the stores in Chicago, and then um, yeah, that's that's kind of it. We're mainly in Chicago right now, and then oh, we are in Home Goods as well. But home goods, oh. I don't know. You don't. They don't tell you the exact locations you're in. Okay. So. All right. Good. I've had your pasta sauce, and I do like it a lot. Is there anything that you would have done differently with starting your own, uh, like, um, your own product? Now that you've done it. Uh no. No. Okay. Good. Yeah. No. Good. And is there any other products that you want to start, or is there something else like business wise that you want to get into? Uh, that we'll see. Uh, we've talked about, um, we've talked about a vodka sauce and Ooh. we've talked about potentially like doing like dry pasta Ooh. and those things. So we'll see. That's just like in time. Yeah. But that's like, that's, that's just cause it all kind of goes in this conglomerate of. Yeah. Sundays I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to, yeah. I wouldn't want to like also do licorice, you know, like it would have to right. make sense. Right. 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 Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Keep it going. All right, now we're gonna get into some dating advice. Ah, our favorite thing ever, because we were Let's on go. a dating show. And guys, for our listeners, I actually call Joe and Serena about dating advice all the time. I'll be like, Joe, put me on speakerphone. <laughs> also, I don't know if you should be taking my advice, but I'll give it. No, I um, mean, the thing Disclaimer, is Disclaimer, I'm not a professional dating advice no. giver. No, no, no. But I do think that I do think that you have interesting takes because you have a lot of you have a lot of married friends, but you also have a lot of single friends. I have an opinion. Yeah, and you and you have an effing feel, opinion. Yeah, I have an opinion. <laughs> feel free to, to take it or not. Okay, so um, quick questions here: How should a girl or guy deal with a fuck boy? Uh, well, I think I think they need to. Uh, look within themselves to make sure that they're also not a fuck boy or fuck girl. <laughs> um, and I, got, I, got. I think it's, yeah, I think, I think just know what you want as an individual. And if that other person's not giving it to you, then you have to walk away. Got to cut that shit. Yeah. Damn. It's a harsh truth, but I have, mm, I've learned that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Advice for putting yourself out there for someone who, Feeling like I want to date, but I don't know how to put myself out there and and, and be uh, like open. Yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't the best at putting myself out there before I went on these shows, but I would say usually it's like whatever you're like scared to do when it comes to like putting yourself out there. That's probably what you should run towards, which is like the worst, but I always feel like that is what ends up working. Like, like just going on like a, a dating reality show. I was like, I would like, that's, that's awful. Yeah. So I did it and it worked. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. That just, mm, okay. I have to digest that later. Um, because that's really great advice. I know you're not a professional advice. Giver. I know I, it's, but it's like, it's, it's great advice, but it also is like not the advice you want to hear because you know, it's like the, it's like the hard, the truth. hard thing. Yeah. But it's also, you know, the reward that you get just from life. Actually, that's like also life advice. You know, sometimes you don't want to go to the gym and you're like, ugh. but then after you leave the gym, you're like, I'm yeah. glad I did that. I'm 100%. so glad I did that. All right. Uh, okay. For people, that are in relationships what's one thing you would say you would do to keep it spicy to keep it spicy mm -hmm. uh i just like i think make sure make sure you like 
have date nights and schedule date nights. Yeah, and, and I think I think being spontaneous in a relationship with whatever it is, if it's just like you know randomly hooking up at a certain a different time of the day, or or, <laughs> or like you know going out, um, you know randomly on a thursday night when you usually don't just like doing things like that random yeah. keeping keeping the spontaneity yes yeah. okay good good uh what do you think of the state of dating right now i don't know because i'm married so i'm not paying attention <laughs> well i'm saying from your single friends from your from the view of your single friends i know i talk to you and give you shit I know fucking Clay talk, calls you and gives you shit or you see things, you know. <laughs> well, I think I think dating is I think it's I just think dating is become it's just like own like its own thing. Like I don't know. I don't I I feel like people now don't necessarily date to like meet the person they want to spend the rest of their life life with. Mm -hmm. They date because like they're bored and it's fun and let's just meet people and hook up and do that yeah 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 right yeah i mean a lot of people are in that mindset for sure yeah yep i would agree thoughts on people dating in the franchise who did not meet on the show but you know they're in the franchise i'm in the franchise i see you you see me we're at a party we're at an event da -da -da, blah 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 i think what it's fine think? i think it's totally normal i think it's i think it's in um like once you're in like like the bachelor nation of it all, I mm -hmm. think it's an easy way to um, make an introduction and for like to to actually meet someone. So I, th I don't, I think it's fine. Speaking of reality TV, mm -hmm. you are on a new show. Yes. Called The Goat. Called The Goat. It's going to be on um, streaming on Amazon and Freevee, Amazon Prime and Freevee May 9th. May 9th mm -hmm. it starts. Okay. Uh, hey, Ooh, I, Serena's face tell me what a terrible angle this is. Yeesh. She's she's calling you right now. Yeah, answer. Mm -mm. No, I mean I, I'm fine, but like I feel like it's kind of distracting. I'm on a I'm on I'm in a live podcast right now. Hi, Serena. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye. <laughs> bye. All right. Okay, go on. Okay. So. You're on the goat. Um, I know you probably can't say too much about it because it's not out yet, but how long did you guys film for? But I'm going to ask you anyway. Yeah, I'm going to ask you anyways. I'm going to ask you anyways. Uh, Give us some tea. How long did we film for? Or the duration of filming? I, I believe, I mean, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard for me to answer that question because I can't like. You can't give it away. Yeah. Okay. 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 Fine, fine, fine. Um. There was co-ed people on this. Yes. There, there were guys, there were girls on this show. Sure. So the whole premise of the show, from what I saw on the trailer, it's like basically someone gets awarded. It's a competition show. It's a competition show, but basically it's kind of like, it's it's giving traders a little bit, right? Um, Different, but yeah, I mean, it's which they're all competition shows, so yeah, it's a competition show. So, what was the main objective? And the main objective is to win, to win, but to but to win and be the last one standing, right? But yes. Okay. Okay. To yes. be the last one standing. Okay. So there were co-ed people there. Were there any love connections that you saw happening on? Um, I mean, yeah, like. It's not that kind of show, but like I don't know, you have to stay tuned. Oh, I want to know because I mean, certain some of these shows, ha people fall for each other because even though it's not a dating show. Yeah, I think that's what I think. Yeah. How many I, single I think that goes back to I think that that just goes back to my whole, um, my example of of just meeting someone at a bar. Yeah, you can fall in love with anyone, I guess, if you're in the if you like them and you're in the same room for a decent amount of time. How many single people were on the show? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like most, I feel like most of the cast, um, were in relationships, but I can't, I, wow. mean, I, don't, I don't remember. Okay. Okay. Well, so maybe we won't get a love connection. I'm always looking for that. I, I mean, you know, uh, sorry. I am. Okay. So it comes out in May. 
we need to have you back on when it comes on. I cannot wait to watch it because it does look the trailer was spicy. Yeah, the, the trailer, trailer, was, the trailer was good. What did you think of Tosh? I love him. I love him. Uh, so, by the way, my friends in college used to call me Tosh Point O because Natasha. My, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, they used to call me that. So I can't wait. I think he's hilarious. So funny. Yeah, he's hilarious, and I used to love his show too that he had a, back in the day. Um. So we're going to have you back on the show. We need to have Serena too. We can fit like another person in this room somehow. We have Serena on here too because when Serena listens to this episode and she hears what you have to say about this book. I, I thought I was I thought I was spot on about that. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on You're to welcome. my podcast. And I hope you come back. And if you guys have questions for joe that i did not ask him please let me know because he's gonna come back because you're like my you you are here in new york and it's great and i always love podcasting with you even when we had our podcast it's just you know it's a chill hang time and um for our listeners i hope you got some gems out of this and if you're thinking about going on a reality show <laughs> do it <laughs> do you want me to say something at the end yeah. of this um <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Just figure it out, I guess. <laughs> you you can be the next grocery store, Joe. <laughs> figure it out. Do what makes you happy. I cannot wait to see you next week. Bye-bye. See ya. Thanks for listening to Hidden Gems with me, your host, Natasha Parker. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. It really helps grow our budding community. Follow me on IG at Natasha Parker and the show at Gems with Natasha. Hidden Gems with Natasha Parker is produced by Gotham Production Studios.